Welcome back to ShareXP. Today I'm going to show you this Dan Cuban DMC version 2.0. I'm going to cover what it's like to tattoo with this machine, some of the pros and cons, and some of my favorite features. Let's get started. So if you've hopped on Dan Cuban's site, you will generally see a lot of very expensive machines. Uh, and to be honest, they all look pretty sweet. Uh, there's a big variety in finishes. Uh, you can see anything from black oxide to a nickel finish like this. He also offers uh, different patinas, and I think there's like an enamel floating around in there somewhere too. But uh, I would suspect that as this machine gets more updates and gains popularity that the price might even go up just depending on demand but when i purchased this machine in 2020 it ran me about 800 dollars. so keep that in mind if you were wanting to pursue getting one of these machines now uh what makes dan's machines a little different uh, at least when it comes to buying one, you do have to be aware that he places them on his website for sale on Sundays, usually 9, 10 Central Standard Time. So what's cool about that is it actually drives up the demand for this machine. Um, this is the DMC version 2.0. I have owned, I think, a total of four or five different machines of his. Now I am by no means an expert, but I definitely have done several hundred tattoos with this machine and I'll do my best to give you my biased insight, I suppose. I can't say unbiased because everyone has biased, but I'll give you my insight the best that I can. Now my very first cartridge machine was a Dan Cuban swing liner. And to be honest, it uh, didn't really sell me right out the gate. I used it off and on, but I did see the potential and the uniqueness of the transmission that Dan Cuban had created and then I believe perfected in the DMC. Now, it's difficult to see here, but there is a series of two wheel bearings that are either close to one another or stacked on top of each other in such a way where as the cam spins round and round, it kind of brushes up against this secondary wheel and moves the armature bar up and down, but also has a give system to give it a feel very similar to a coil machine, because that's what every rotary machine is trying to do, right? Have the reliability of a rotary with the give and feel of a coil machine, because that's what a lot of people are used to, and it's a cool way to create specific effects. Now, the swing liner does have a second model, which has just been released, and I'm going to do a video on that in the future. But I have owned the DMC model 1, 1.5, and now the 2.0, which was released in May of 2020. And you can see that it did, in fact, snag up one of the first ones of those. And now, a year later, I can bring you this video and share my experience. If you're sensitive to noise, uh, this machine shouldn't hurt your ears, but it does make some noise. To be honest, I, I prefer machines that make a little noise. I like that audible feedback when I'm tattooing. I like knowing where I'm at in the skin. But if you prefer dead silence and you want to listen to the air whistle out of your client's nose, then stick with your pen machines. 
If you want a little bit of feedback and you like that hum, you might be interested in one of these machines. As far as ergonomics go, I feel like it's a fairly balanced machine. You can see that here. A lot of that weight does stay forward over the hand when you're tattooing, so that's nice. I really do like the screw that's used on the vise. I know Dan does have those fancy DK screws that have the little DK etched in the middle, but I prefer these just because they're easier to clean. I like being able to just grab that and go. Um, I will mention with this style, I believe it's called like a call it, call it vice. I could be wrong there. You could correct me with the terminology if I am wrong. If you buy cartridge grips in their stainless steel and the back stem is not very rigid or if it's thinner, you might have some crushing issues with this. It's not necessarily this machine's fault. It's just this style of vice is very susceptible to, if you crank that down, you more than likely are going to dent your back stem. Now, what separates the DMC 2.0 from all the other versions has to do with the balance of power versus the hit. On his older versions, I found that you did have to crank the machine so high to the point where it was a little bit uncontrolled and you would get a lot of spatter and spray and it would just be like an airbrush, which isn't what you want, especially when you're trying to keep your area sanitary and keep your customers happy. Now... This machine can run as low as five and a half volts approximately and still have a very sharp hit. I would say on the high end of things, maybe like 6.2345 is about as high as I would go. So it has kind of a smaller range uh, where I prefer to use it. If you choose to buy one of these machines, you might tinker around and find a different voltage that works better for you. Let me get this started up just so you can hear what it sounds like at five and a half volts. I'm going to bump it up. Okay, so that's at six volts right there. Now that is a very sharp hit. And again, that is because the positive is up. If we flip that around, it is a more subdued sound and a slightly more mellow hit. I'll demo that for you again by bringing it down to five and a half. Much quieter, much uh, smoother, I would say, but Just a different tool for the job, essentially. Okay, there's six volts. Now, I am using this giant honking clip cord to demo this for you, but this is not the clip cord I use um, when I'm tattooing. I would recommend to you a high tension, lightweight clip cord that allows you to snap in firmly to these connections. That way you don't have a lot of swing. You don't want to screw with your connection. Some people might be ticked that this is a clip cord only. Uh, it doesn't have an RCA connection, but obviously the polarity hard, soft hit, that matters to Dan, and it should matter to you as the consumer, I suppose. But 
Um, lightweight clipcord, high tension, no swing. That's what you're looking for if you want to uh, have a solid connection and have consistent tattooing. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons and what I really like and would prefer changes on with this machine. So the positives for this machine, here is what I like. This specific finish is the one I would recommend to you most. Go with a nickel finish, in my opinion. I've used the black oxide, uh, one of the Texas T enamel finishes, whatever that was, and now this. And I feel like the nickel plating is the most durable after a year plus worth of use. I will note if you use disposable cartridge grips or thinner back stems, this might uh, potentially crush those back stems. Uh, I use both of these and I feel like they are substantial enough to not cause any warping or issues when you tighten down on that back stem. So that is about how far that screw goes back thankfully, which is out of the way of your hand when you're tattooing. That's nice. If you need to adjust that, you could probably just slap on a couple washers. But um, moving on, I feel as far as reliability goes, it's perfect. I've had zero failures. I haven't had to send this machine back at all. So I'm still running stock motor. I would say I easily have... Mm, 300 plus hours on this thing and it still runs perfectly fine now let's talk about some of the cons unfortunately each machine has a few things I think could be improved upon and we'll cover those right now you're the master and commander of the fine lines and you like to slap down some funky dots on people with your pen machine this is probably not a machine you're interested in anyways, but maybe you are. Maybe you've got some culture. Maybe you have a little bit of a coil background. Oh, just kidding. I like to harp on the pen guys, even though I use pen machines myself now. Um, my point is, if you like to do fine lines, this machine can eke out some fine lines, but that's not necessarily my go-to machine for that. And then dots. I would say stick with your pen machine because this machine really isn't great for dots. Even if you drop it down to five and a half volts, you still have that given there that just makes it kind of tricky to do some dots. Uh, you know, maybe that's a con, uh, just, just kind of a limitation of the machine. As far as an actual con, okay. Um, I'll do my best to tread lightly without <laughs> making anybody angry, but this machine can eat cartridges. It can burst membranes. And what I mean when I say that is this machine is so abusive and hits so hard that more than likely you will need backups ready and available on the off chance that you have a membrane failure or split during the middle of your tattoo. That's a bummer but I just adapted and I have those on hand just because I like the machine that much. So that is something to mention. My experience tattooing with this little baby is awesome. I would not sell this machine. That, uh, that says something. I've, I've easily bought well over a hundred machines and this is one I would not give up. I really enjoy it for traditional work. If you want to lay down some nice bold lines, this has just enough give in it 
that you can lay down some thick lines, one pass, no problem. If you want to put in nice solid saturated color, just be sure to let your needles hang out maybe a little bit extra just to compensate for that give. I'm not telling you how to tattoo, that's just what I've found when I do bold colors. Um, this surprisingly works very well on the sides, like rib areas, hips, things like that. I don't have any issues with blowouts. It's nice and responsive. Uh, the blacks stay very black, and everything heals up fairly quickly. Those are all solid benefits and reasons for me to keep this machine. Hopefully you've liked uh, my input so far. I try to have fun when I make these videos. Uh, I try to list as much information as I can. If you have any comments, uh, feel free to list those below. I do appreciate feedback. It's always fun to read what people think of my videos. And again, thanks for liking and subscribing. I do appreciate it. I'll be sure to release a couple more tattoo machine videos before the end of this year. Thanks again for watching, and have a nice day.